Okay, everybody, let's take a look at part two of networks right now. Okay, what are the acronyms that I said you guys should know? Man. Okay, one of them is man. Man, WAN, and LAN, and VLAN, I heard. VPN, WLAN, is that one? Just, just make up letters at this point. QLAN, no. Q, QN, no, 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 no. I don't know if we did that one. Did we do that one? We didn't do that one. I think Jack's making stuff up there. I think that's nothing. We did do SAN, yeah. We did do SAN. Acronym, acronym, acronym. Okay, focus on these three for a second. In what order do they go? Like, which is the smallest? Okay, because what does LAN stand for? You're right. What's the next biggest? Metropolitan. And then finally, and that should be an N, not an L. I don't know why I put WOW. <laughs> there we go. Wide. Okay. Local, metropolitan, wide. In reality, you could probably take this one out and really just think of them in those two sides, from a local area network to a wide area network. But it's nice to have things in threes. Now, what are these things? What's this? Virtual, what does that mean? Made by software, right. It's more of a virtual environment. Basically, if you hear the word virtual in computer science, it generally means made by software. Okay? Virtual memory is memory that's not necessarily physical on your device. They're just using the hard drive to sort of simulate memory. The virtual machine in Java is how Java runs by pretending it's some other machine. So the word virtual is basically using software to emulate an environment. VPN and SAN. Virtual private network, yeah. So again, virtual private network. And SAN? Storage, right. Storage device. Okay, let's dig into some hardware right now. The components of a network, specifically a local network. Doesn't matter, it's the same components. Okay, so as far as hardware goes, you're going to need to, at some point, connect them. If we're talking physical wiring, okay, physical actual wiring is a part of that. We can also talk about wireless hardware and how that works, okay? Again, you guys are not going to be required to dig deep into this for your IB content. You don't need to know all the specific types of hardware, but you have to have a general understanding of the hardware that's going on there. So let me show you some actual pieces of hardware, okay? This is called the twisted pair wiring system. This is the wiring system that's in here right now. You'll notice that jack connector is the one that goes in the back of your computer. That's called an RJ45 connector. It looks like the connector that goes into uh, landline telephones, but it's not the same. It just has the same appearance, but the network connector for this is a different connector. It's the RJ45. Um, it's a bit of an older style now. This is not the newest technology, but it used a bunch of twisted wire there to send the signal across. You still encounter these in places. For example, at the university, they often wire using coaxial cable. They're, they've kind of upgraded most of this now, but this one as well uses a BNC connector. It actually uses a copper coaxial cable connector. This is very similar to the um, cable wire that you'd plug into a television, okay? Same general idea, except that uses uh, uh, copper wiring. And then obviously the faster connector is the fiber optic wiring. Okay, fiber optic wiring is actually a glass. It's made of a glass fiber that actually transmits the data much faster than the copper. Okay, so fiber optic uses a different connector set. This is a newer technology in terms of physical wiring that's going to give you the best performance there, the fiber optic. Okay, now when you get to the device, let's say for argument's sake it's an actual computer, you need hardware inside the computer to accept that wire. Generally, that's called a card, an interface card. Remember, we talked about this in the hardware unit a little bit, that a card essentially just means a circuit board, okay? So there's a circuit board or a network card that accepts that. Sometimes that's built right into the motherboard, or depending on the device, it could be, it could be some other device other than a computer, okay? 
So that card can exist and it then connects to the network operating system. We talked about that before. That's the software side that picks up the signal and deals with the signal. Now, other devices like printers or uh, storage devices will also allow to be physically wired into the network. So they'll also have network operating system and a network card built into it in a different capacity though, right? It's not gonna need the same functionality of say a computer as it's connected. Okay, then along your network, you're gonna have other devices that are dedicated to helping move the signals around, okay? We actually don't have any in here right now. In my old computer room back at Silver Heights, I actually had an actual router and a bridge in, in, in there. Um, I think I'd like to maybe take you guys tomorrow on a mini field trip to our server room to take a look at some of that hardware in action right here in the school. Okay, no, it's just two rooms down from here, but I gotta make sure that's okay with the tech first before we go in. She's always fine with it. Okay, so now that we've got the physical, actual physical components in place, and we'll talk more about wireless in a minute, um, I wanna now examine something that is in the curriculum called the topology of a network. This is basically the architecture, like how you can set up the network, not physically, but in terms of placement, okay? So there are four basic topologies, the star topology, the ring topology, the bus topology, and then a hybrid. So hybrid just means a mix of the other ones. So really there's just the three, okay? So first of all, we're gonna connect them together. So we'll use say physical wiring to connect them together. If we connect them in a star topology, basically what it does is you have one device to act as the main server and then all other devices wire into it in this star shape. Now, let's talk about advantages of this, okay? Or disadvantages, first of all. If this client right here wants to send a message to this client, the only way to get there is to go through the server and up to the client, okay? If these two clients were directly connected together, they would have a direct connection. So, moving ahead a little bit, okay? If we take a look at the ring topology, that's what I'm talking about there. That the clients are essentially connected together in a ring. So one client connects to the other, connects to the other, connects to the other in a ring. The advantage of this system, if this was say your home and you were connecting computers this way, physically wiring them, not wireless, is you don't need a server to send messages or send data from one client to the next. You don't need a server. And say this client over here could print by passing his print job through the other clients over to the printer. So the computers are kind of acting as little servers on their own. The servers can be expensive, right? So say you're setting up a business, you could set up this ring topology without the expense of buying a server. But let's talk about a disadvantage of this system. Let's say this client right here breaks down and I am over here and I want to print. So I send a message to this guy, guess what? Connection just got severed. I can't get over to that printer. Now if we back up to the star topology, if this guy goes down, no problem. I can still go through the server and get to the printer. But can you name a disadvantage of the star topology? What if the server breaks down? Everybody goes out, right? And we know that from here in the school. When the server goes down, everybody goes out. Because the server in a star topology is the big deal. Whereas in a ring topology, one person can go down and the other people can still work. They can't necessarily access all the resources of the network, but they can still work. So there are some advantages to these different topologies. Then there's the, uh, the bus topology. The bus topology acts like a server but it's actually not using server hardware. It's using some other piece of hardware like a router right here. And basically what it does is, same thing, if this part goes out, the network stays alive, but you can't send messages. Think of this as like a uh, two-lane highway. So at any point you can merge into the two-lane highway and get over to another spot on the network. So if I wanna go from here to over there, I can go onto the bus, go over here, get off the bus and go there. So if a client goes down, it's not a big deal, right? I can still send messages around that down client by getting on the bus. But if the bus goes down, just like a server, the whole thing goes down, OK? 
okay, so to speak. But bus topology is a little bit cheaper than server topology, okay? This is generally the server topology, let me go back, where was it? There we go. Server topology is generally the most accepted topology now because it just works the best, but it has the highest expense because you're buying a server at that point. Now, what a lot of people will do is they will, they will take an actual computer off their network and make it act as a server, which is fine, that works, but your server generally should be the most powerful computer on your system, okay? But you, you needed to be aware of these three topologies, the star, the ring, and the bus, and that whole advantages, disadvantages. I've seen those questions on the IB exam before, okay? So advantages of the star topology is that the hub prevents collisions between messages. Um, that's something um, we didn't talk too much about is the idea of collisions. So say this client at the top wants to send a message to the client beside him, but at the same time, this guy wants to send a message to that one. Well, the server works out the details. The server works it out. But in a, but in a ring topology, okay, if this guy's sending a message over here, and this guy's sending a message over here, sort of like two cars going the different directions on the highway, we can have a collision of data, which needs to be worked out. Now, without a server in place, it doesn't have a way to work it out other than waiting for the message to get across that, that network. So with a server, you don't have to worry about that. The server takes care of all the messaging. It, it can handle it. It sorts it out. Okay? The problem with the server network is if the server goes down, or the star topology, the whole thing goes down. Okay? Ring topology, same idea that we just mentioned. Advantage is they flow in one direction, so there's no collision. And No, never mind. Um, Disadvantage is that one node on the network goes down in a ring topology, then we cannot send messages through the network because it breaks down at that point. Bus topology, as we talked about before, is a common piece of hardware that allows it to travel through. All right, we'll talk more about this tomorrow.